Hello everyone. My name is Paul Roberts and I want to tell you a most amazing story. It's a story of intrigue and illicit affairs that happened over 200 years ago with changes in names and it involves the Industrial Revolution in England and military service in India, the last Zulu war in South Africa, and then the greatest diamond rush that ever occurred, and then the gold rush to the Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. And the identity of the hero of the story and of his parents and grandparents were all discovered using DNA. This is the story of my great-grandfather, Richard Charles Roberts. I was becoming less and less English the more I learned. Here my great-grandfather, my father's grandfather, Richard Charles Roberts, this perfect Englishman, or not so perfect, who um, fought in the last Zulu war for the British Army and served in India. He was actually Luigi Pietro Rolandi from Birmingham. And he was only a quarter English. His father was Luigi Rolandi from Italy and his mother was half English. His mother was Susan Agostini and her father was Luigi Agostini from Luca in Italy, and her mother was Alice of unknown last name. Remember, Susanna was the girl who lived in London, gave birth to Luigi, and then ended back in London with her parents a few years later under her maiden name. And the baby stayed with the father, Luigi from Italy. So who was this Alice? She was the only English blood in my father's line. And all we knew of her was that she, she came from Deal in Kent. I had to find out who Alice was and who were her ancestors. Just as a reminder, here's what the tree looked like. Here was Richard Charles Roberts, Luigi Rolandi, with his two wives in South Africa and his wife that he abandoned in Birmingham. And his father was Luigi Rolandi from Italy, unknown place in Italy, but we knew he was born somewhere around 1825. And Susanna Agostini, born in London, born in 1836, and she was half Italian, half English. There's her Italian father from Luca and the mother in question, Alice, born around 1800 in Deal, Kent. Deal is a lovely little coastal village or town just north of Dover. I have searched many times over the years, both in London and in Deal, for Alice. The only information I can find on her is in the, in the censuses of 1841 and 1851 and 1861. Each time she is Alice Agostini, the wife of Luigi Agostini, so we do not know her maiden name. She, this census in 1851 did say that she came from Deal in Kent, and that's the only clue that we have. The ages of her on the censuses indicate she was born about 1800. I now had to find a woman named Alice in Kent, born in about 1800. The only possible way to do that would be using DNA. So I went back to my father's DNA on Ancestry and went to his matches. On the matches, as I mentioned before, I'd grouped them into the various subgroups and given them colors. So now I can search for members within a particular group. So I wanted to look at all those English relatives and I'd given them the orange color and labeled them Kent. 
So I just click on that and apply. And now I will see all my Kent matches. And immediately the first bunch that came up were all four members of that K family in Massachusetts because they are also descended from Susan Agostini, the daughter of Alice. And uh, so they were first on the list. And next, there were other members of the same family, another member of the K family, Michaela from Australia, another member of the K family, and finally, and we're now into the fourth to six cousins, now we finally start seeing all these other English people from Kent and other southeastern England areas, and there were many of them. So I had started another floating tree, and this tree was growing and growing. It was huge. Most of these people did, didn't have a tree or had a very small tree, but there were a few that had very large trees. And it was impossible for me to know which of their ancestors I was related to because we're going back five generations or so. And it could be any one of their great, 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 great grandparents that I was looking for. So it took a long time, but soon I started to see common names coming up and tying one of these shared matches with another shared match. And gradually it all started coming together, but it probably took about a year of building this. So gradually this floating tree grew and grew and started to narrow down and narrow down to a single couple in Kent. And this is part of that floating tree. There's a lot more to it, but it was all these different families coming together and tracing back their ancestors through the early 1900s, 1880s, back back 1780s, back to this couple here, Charles Neve and Mary Brett. They turned out to be the significant couple. Every one of the English family relatives, the DNA matches of my dad, all traced back to Charles Neve and Mary Brett. And basically every one of them was a fourth cousin of my dad's, maybe once removed or twice removed, but all at the fourth cousin level. And Charles was born on the 11th October 1761 in Godmersham, Kent, and he married Mary Brett in Dover, and they had all their children in Deal, and he died in Deal, on the 12th of August, 1815. His wife, Mary, was from Deal. She was born in Deal on the 26th of November, 1760, and died in Deal on the 30th of October, 1800. And that's when Alice was born, we think. So here we have every English relative tying back to a single couple living in Deal, and we know that Alice came from Deal. This must be Alice's parents, Charles Neve and Mary Brett. So Alice's last name must be Neve. As further proof, let's have a look at the through lines. Here are the through lines for Charles Neve. There he is at the top, and these are his descendants through, uh, through one daughter, Alice. There's Susan Agostini, nine DNA matches under Susan Agostini, and three under her brother, Louis Agostini. So a total of 12 matches there under Alice, but there's many more under Charles. These are all the descendants who've sent in DNA, descendants of Charles. Under his daughter, Hannah, there are nine DNA matches. Under Mary, the, and the, all these children are born in the 1780s, 
two DNA matches, and a John, two DNA matches, and a Ann, four DNA matches, and a Catherine, four generations down, just one DNA match. So there are a total of 31 matching DNA descendants of Charles Neve on this tree. Just as some added confirmation, I want to show you under Alice Neve, Charles Neve's daughter here on Through Lines, there were those three matches from Louis Agostini, uh, born Luigi Agostini, and nine matches under his sister Susanna. Those matches are, if I click on them, the Biagiati family, that's all the K family from Massachusetts, and my great-grandfather and my grandfather and my dad. So that just shows that K family from Massachusetts all share Susan Agostini's DNA all the way back up to Charles Neve's DNA. And they share it with all those other matches on the through lines as well. I should also mention these matches are all for both Charles Neve and Mary Brett. And now a final look at Charles Neve and Mary Brett and their children. They had nine children together and they were all born in Deal. Hannah, 1783, Elizabeth, 1785, Charles, 1787, Mary, 1789, John, 1791 and 1793, and Alice, 1795, Catherine, 1797, William, 1799, and the mother, Mary, died in 1800. They only had one daughter, Alice, and she was born in 1795. From the censuses in London, they would indicate Alice was born in 1800, but she was born five years earlier. So I thought maybe they had an Alice, she died early and they named another daughter Alice, maybe born in 1800. But I think this is most likely Alice who married Luigi Agostini. And perhaps she just took five years off her age when she was in London. He was a little bit younger and uh, she didn't want to be an old maid. So she said she was five years younger. This was a major breakthrough in the solving of the mysteries of my father's English DNA. The first breakthrough had come when Michaela in Perth told me that her great-grandfather's name was Louis Peter Rolandi and he was born in Birmingham in 1877. And then the second big breakthrough came when I discovered through using a floating tree that the Kay family in Massachusetts and my father shared a great-grandmother by the name of Susan Agostini. And now this breakthrough, solving the mystery of the mother of Susan Agostini using again a floating tree and my dad's DNA matches, this brought the English family finally into the light. Charles Neve and Mary Brett in Deal, Kent. Our family have been searching for the English identity of my great-grandfather Richard Charles Roberts for many decades, and I have personally been searching for almost two decades. And now finally, I found that my fourth great-grandparents were the first English couple in my line. I was a long way from being English on my dad's side of the family. Once I had discovered the identity of Charles Neve and Mary Brett, I could then use FamilySearch.org to find more and more of my ancestors going back in time from Charles and Mary. Because fortunately, with Charles being born in 1761 and Mary in 1760, there didn't appear to be any changes in name in their ancestry, no jumping around from one continent to another or one country to another. So it was 
old English records of the family going back in Kent. Here is a Google Earth view of England and Ireland and I want to show you where that church is in Deal, where the Neve children were baptized. So right there is where Alice Neve was baptized and that is the town of Deal. Here is a map view uh, of Kent showing London and Canterbury, Ashford, Dover and Deal. The channel leaves from Folkestone under the channel to Europe. But Deal is where Alice Neve was born and her mother Mary Brett was also born here. Mary's family all lived around this area for many generations and um, the Neve family, Alice's father, Charles Neve, was born in Godmersham and his father, Edmund Neve, was born in 1723 in Little Charge, just outside Ashford. His father, Edmund Neve, was born in 1695 in Benenden and his father, James Neve, was born in 1661 in Benenden. And his father, Ralph Neve, was born in 1640 in Burwash. And Ralph's father, we know, was born in Sussex somewhere. Uh, this Burwash is in Sussex, but uh, we I haven't been able to trace him any further. A little side note. I've visited England many times over the years, and uh, I've traveled all around this area before I ever knew my ancestors came from here. In fact, I lived in England for a brief time back in 1989-90, uh, looking at the opportunity of settling there permanently, but uh, decided to come to the United States instead. And the one place I lived in England was Benenden. I had no idea my ancestors came from there. It's the tiniest little village. And now I discover that in the 1600s, my ancestors were living in Benenden. And he has a picture. This is a picture of me uh, taken. It was actually taken in Ashford, but it was at the time when I was living in Benenden. Now, the final mystery in my dad's tree was Luigi Rolandi Sr., the father of Richard Charles Roberts, who we now knew was Luigi Pietro Rolandi. Remember, he was born in 1858. His father said he was born somewhere between 1824 and 1830 in Italy. The English censuses didn't even give us a province of Italy, so we had no idea where, and it's a big country. We had sorted out Susan Agostini and her mother, Alice Neve, but would I have any success with Luigi? It seemed an impossible task, and there was very little on FamilySearch.org. I did find a Rolandi family, family up in northeastern Italy, close to the Austrian border, and I spent quite some time investigating them, trying to find if they had a son Luigi born in that time period, but uh, no success. I doubted the Italians would have kept many records, and I was quite pessimistic. However, my success with the floating trees for Susan Agostini and Alice Neve gave me a glimmer of hope, and I'd been working on that second Italian floating tree for a long time. It was gradually becoming bigger than the English Kent tree had been. This is where I started my floating tree for the large Italian family. These are my dad's matches again. And these are all his matches. And you can see there's Connie Kay from the Massachusetts family. Down here is Harrison Kay from the Massachusetts family. 
So these are close relatives, they're descendants of Susan Agostini, second to third cousins, and right between them is ER, and she is part of that purely Italian family, and she's not related at all to the K family. She's an Italian unrelated to the K family, but related to a whole bunch of other Italians not related to the K family, so not related to the Agostinis. So these must be a separate Italian family related to the Rolandis. So I was building their floating tree. It turns out uh, I wrote to uh, her name is Elvira a, new, a number of times and never got a reply and I later discovered that she had died in 2017. So this is where I started. All these people are dead now so I haven't uh, hidden their faces or names but this is Elvira who I has, has that very close DNA relationship with my father, second or third cousins. She had her tree tra traced back to Giovanni Apollinari and Maria Piscina. Elv Elvira living in the United States, her parents were Giovanni Bassi and Catherine Hempel. Catherine was not Italian, so that ruled her out, so we must be related through Giovanni Bassi. Giovanni Bassi's parents were Maria Apollinari and Augustino Bassi. So it could be through either of those parents that we are related. That was the beginning of my Italian tree. As I traced back one of the other DNA matches of my dad's in this Italian group, they also linked to Giovanni Apollinari. So I knew that this was the grandparent of um, Elvira, or great-grandparent of Elvira, who we were linked through. And as I evaluated more and more of those Italian matches, more and more of them began to link to the Apollinari family. And one of the uh, members in their tree had the parents of Giovanni listed as Donato and Mar Maria Celesta Lazari. I seem to remember that I got that information on the parents of Giovanni from a lady who is a distant cousin, Eliza Pancheri. In fact, her husband is also descended from Donato and Maria Lazari. And I contacted her or she contacted me because we were DNA matches. And she became very interested in my story. I shared the story with her and she has been following it along with me. We've become friends on, online through email through this process and one day I plan on meeting her and her husband and hopefully that will happen in Italy. So I ended up with this huge Italian tree all traced back to Donato and Maria Lazari. I had a number of their children but I didn't have a child Luigi and their children are all born about the time period when Luigi was born, Luigi Rolandi. But there's no Rolandi here. If Maria had an affair with someone, uh, with a Rolandi and gave birth, she wouldn't have named the son Rolandi. And if, she'd, if there was no record of her being previously married to a Rolandi. So I couldn't understand why there is no Rolandi here and there was no son Luigi. Finally, Eliza Pancheri had contacted someone else and got some information somewhere that they had a son, Luigi Apollinari, born in 1825. I had spent many months going over this tree and a similar tree on 23andMe 
And when Eliza told me that Donato and Maria had a son named Luigi, I immediately went to England and looked for an Apollinari. And the final door was open. And for a quick confirmation, here are the through lines for Donato Apollinari. So these are all his descendants by DNA match. Luigi Apollinari, who we've known as Luigi Rolandi, has 13 matches under Donato. And that's Luigi P. Apollinari, Luigi Pietro, who we know as Richard Charles Roberts, or Luigi Rolandi, or Louis Rowland, my grandfather, my dad. Celesta Apollinari, who we haven't met yet. We'll meet her in London, so she will come in the next episode. Seven matches under her. Then under Donato's other son, Giovanni Maria, uh, he, there are a number of other matches too. Maria Caterina Apollinari, two, two generations down to Louis Pancheri. Maria Virginia Apollinari has two matches. Adrian Apollinari, his name is actually Stefano Andrea, but when he came to America, he called himself Adrian. So in my um, tree, I have him as Stefano Andrea, and that's why it's showing him green as if he doesn't match to evaluate. And then another son, Stefano, with three matches. So there are 21 DNA matches under Donato Apollinari. So finally, with the help of Eliza Pancheri and the help of my massive floating Italian tree and all the DNA matches of my dad, I was able to find out who the father of Luigi Rolandi Sr. was. His father in Italy was Donato Apollinari. It seemed every generation changed their name and shifted consonants. But through DNA, I'd been able to trace it. So now immediately, I didn't go to England. I went to the records in familysearch.org for England and searched for a Polinari instead of Rolandi. And suddenly, all the records began to appear and the story came to light. And so in the next episode, we will look at the life of Luigi Rolandi, now Luigi Apollinari, in London.